Confucius once said, when you have faults, do not fear to abandon them. And we are not saying that the Chinese people have faults, but we are saying Confucius himself had faults. And this was recognized by the government. And in 1949, his teachings were banned. But move, moving on, many generations later, as opening has told you, we've got Confucius Institutes around, ladies and gentlemen. We think that this debate beckons a question. Why can't we take national pride from the fact that we have overcome the past, that we have recognized what's good about Confucianism and that we want to celebrate and embrace it? So the question that beckons also is this. What's wrong with the Chinese state controlling the image of Confucius? And we will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, why the statue needs to be there. Now to start, I'm adopting all the arguments and bringing it to this side, and we'll extend it further. <laughs> Relax. The theme, ladies and gentlemen, is why the state government has should do this. And we'll draw to you a trend analysis without, within our particular idea. Right. We think there's been a big mischaracterization from the opening half, right? Because they're saying that it's political, the government should never do this, the, the government should never have the ideology. But no one knows what the facts are. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, we have the Confucius Institutes. Number two, on the, on the 20th of, on, in September 2010, the Chinese government for the first time recognized, no thank you ma'am, the commemoration of Confucius' birthday. In January 11, Mr. Wu Weishan was commissioned by the Chinese government to erect a 31-foot, 9.5 bronze oh. statue at Tiananmen Square. Do all of you know about this? Oh. <laughs> but, and in April, ladies and gentlemen, this statue was stolen. What does this mean, right? I, I, I think I'm going a bit to my extension at this point, right? This means that the Chinese government, no thank you man, has taken the position, right, that Confucianism does play a role within the society. And we think that when they say, oh no, it's too controversial, oh no, um, it's going to be bad for people, it's wrong. Because the, the statue already exists there. On that point. That's a very quick one. Right? The, the only problem, no thank you, the only problem they have here is basically, oh, you forget history, right? But they are okay with, number one, the statue being in the museum. Number two, they forget the Daniel. fact that the statue has been there. Go ahead. Just to clarify, because you are obviously not understanding this, this side of the house is not only op opposing the Confucius face. We believe that the government should never ever endorse a specific choice that is against and harming to many minorities within China. Uh, no, that's a knife, right? Uh, this side says they shouldn't because that particular man has a particular identity, right? But they are okay with the fact that Mao Zedong is there. Based on your logic, Mao Zedong shouldn't even be at Tiananmen Square. So we think they should defend their position if they want to be totally neutral about it. But we think, so, so coming back very quickly to rebuttals, right? We think the fact that it's in the museum already shows a concession that it exists. But they say, oh no, that's the past. We say, well, although that's the past, it still has a connotation that it is a, a statue or that it is a symbol that exists and that is a symbol that has some kind of prominence within the Chinese society. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to move on to my extension on the trend analysis. We think that the Chinese government has a right or has a duty or that it's consistent with the Chinese position in wanting to ensure that Confucianism is portrayed the way it wants to, right? I've told you that there's already a statue there. I told you that, um, that the CPC recognizes the commemoration of his birthday. No, thank you, sir. In 2010, in fact, Chao Yun Fat acted in a movie about Confucius. I don't know how many of you have seen it. All of you have seen it, right? So this shows that the state isn't so sensitive about these particular ideas and that the state recognizes it. Furthermore and beyond that, the state also has a slogan, the Harmonious Society slogan. President Hu Jintao quotes Confucius in his speeches, ladies and gentlemen. So what is this about the state closing their Come on, give me a clap. Come on. Taking a step further, ladies and gentlemen, um, I was doing some research, right? This gentleman by the name of Daniel A. Bell, which is the as me, right? He's a philosophy professor at Tsinghua University and author of China's New Confucianism. He says there's a need for ethics and morals and promoting Confucianism. He says that because China is going through a phase of increased individualism, of increased sense of competition, right? There inherently exist problems within the society that needs to be addressed. And we think that's why the existence of Confucius 
statue within Tiananmen Square is so particularly important. I'll illustrate this for you and I'll show you this. So now you have Mao Zedong's picture there and now you have Confucius state here. What's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, is this is what's going to happen to the Chinese society. <laughs> Society believes in values of yin and yang, about the pendulum swinging one way and the pendulum swinging one way. Oh, what? Oh, sorry. Uh, the monk told me this, right? He's, he's going to explain what he means by it, right? But we think ultimately this reflects particular values. But taking it to a step further, and before I go there, go ahead, sir. You just held up a picture of a smiley face. Do you think a Uyghur who is red? Confucius' defense of a Han-only China will have that smiley face on when he enters uh, well, the square. Oh, thank you. Of course, the Uyghur might not be happy, but that is what's written in the books. Han Chinese might not be happy of what Confucius wrote, especially women, because obviously there's effect upon them. But these Uyghurs will now recognize that the modern Confucianism, or the values which are being promoted by the state, are positive values. Values which include, which are about you know, assimilation, values which are about politeness and ethics. So we think the image that the government is portraying isn't the image that will scare people off. Let's get that clear, guys. But it's an image which essentially we think, or we argue, will necessarily bring people together. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what have I told you in my past uh, couple of minutes speech? We've told you, ultimately, this debate is about... So we've, we've conceded, right? There is a statue there, and there's a value to it. Right? We've told you that, a, that as a state, China has a duty in controlling the image of Confucius. We think the image that they're trying to portray is for the benefit of the people. Right? So before I end, I'd like to share this quote with you. And this quote is also another Confucius quote. It says, If there is righteousness in the heart, there will be beauty in the character. If there is beauty in the character, there will be harmony in the home. If there is harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. If there's order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. Thank you very much.